Hi everyone, this is Alicia. I am here on behalf of GMAT Club and welcoming you guys to GMAT Club's MBA application walkthroughs. This is a six week series that we are doing covering the application processes to top 25 MBA programs. So pretty much every Thursday and Friday, as you guys know, for six weeks, we're featuring admissions experts and admissions team and just going step by step very carefully through every aspect of the online application. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel to stay updated and support us if you want more events like this. Uh, make sure you like this video also if it's helpful so that we know that you like it. So again, I'm the host and today's walkthrough, we are covering NYU Stern. And with me today, as you can see on screen, is Trisha Nussbaum. She is an expert coach at Fortuna Admissions and actually a NYU Stern MBA alumni. And I'm sure she has so much to share about her experience. She's also helped hundreds of people with their applications. And yeah, welcome, Trisha. I'll hand it off to you. Thank you. Um, I'm very excited to be here with you guys today. As, as she mentioned, I am a an NYU Stern alum, or what we say, a Sterny. Um, so I'm pretty excited about talking about Stern pretty much all the time. I am also a local New Yorker, um, so it holds a special place in my heart, and I'm very excited to share it with you guys today. Um, so I have a fake sort of application here today. Um, I do have a fake name <laughs> that I created for this profile since I already have a profile myself. Um, so my, my fake name is Tamara Nuttree, <laughs> which in case you're wondering is my Hebrew name and my last name turned into its English translation. So that's my name. Um, when you open up the MBA application, this is the first place that, you, that you'll land. It is the instructions page. Um, you can read this. It's pretty helpful to basically just to understand generally how it works, um, depending on which type of application you picked, whether it's the tech MBA or the full time MBA, the um, the dates you see may adjust in terms of the deadlines in general. Um, NYU is sort of rolling, so they do have rounds, um, but depending on when you submit your application, they go through them as they receive them. It's really so that you have an under those rounds are really so that you have an understanding of the latest that you will hear back um, based on when you submit. So for example, the first round for NYU full-time, I believe the deadline is September 18th, if I remember correctly, um, and there's a specific date that they say that you will hear back, um, that is the latest that you will hear. If you get it in earlier, you may hear earlier. But as long as you get it in before that date, you will hear by the, the, the date um, that they specify. Um, sooner is generally better um, because, you know, it's, it's earlier. It shows that you are, you know, you really care and you want to get in your application earlier, but at the same time, you want your application to be as strong as possible. So when you're considering NYU specific rounds, so to speak, think about more when is the time when you will have the strongest application. Um, if you're going to re be retaking the GMAT, for example, you may need extra time. Um, so that's really the most important thing is getting in the strongest application possible, even if it takes a little bit more time beyond the round deadline. Um, there isn't too much you have to do here. There's just a continue button. So once you read through this, um, I definitely encourage you also before you start applications to for any school really to read about the school. Um, that should uh, help guide you that you want to do this and also that you you have a sense of what the school is about. So definitely take that time before you get there. Um, continuing, the first page is your personal background. Um, this should be relatively straightforward, but I'm gonna fill it out as we go. I have my fake name here. Um, you can see which things are optional or not optional, I believe. Uh, it tells you basically here for example, that the gender identity is optional. So everything else you have to fill out. Um, so we'll just do this pretty quickly. Um, I'm not gonna pay too much attention. Hey, Trisha, would yeah. you see that there's any benefit or um, I guess disadvantage to filling out optional fields? There's absolutely no disadvantage or obligation. Um, it's, it's completely up to you. Keeping in mind that NYU is using the application to get to know you. Um, so it, it's not going to hurt you in any way, for example, to give a 
give your gender, gender identity, whatever that may be. Um, it's really just an opportunity for you to share who you are, um, but you shouldn't feel pressure to share something that you're not comfortable with either. That's why it's optional. Um, they're not using it in any evaluative way. Perfect. That's helpful. And while you're filling out these fields, a question about um, the round deadlines from Pooja mm -hmm. uh, asking, are the merit-based scholarships awarded in all the rounds? So there's actually, so the answer is yes. Um, and there is actually a, a box that you check off uh, later in the application where they ask you if you want to be included in those merit-based scholarships. Um, keeping in mind that merit-based scholarships are limited. So there is an advantage to doing it early um, because there just may be less of a chance of getting them by the end because they may have given out a certain percentage of them. They're not necessarily reserving them for the later rounds. So that is, I guess, technically the disadvantage. But either way, the stronger your application is, the more likely of a chance that you have of getting one. So if it's you know a few weeks or a month where you uh, need that time to make your application stronger, then I would suggest taking it because you'll have a better chance anyway. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not good at multitasking, <laughs> um, but I, I'm doing my best. Uh, you have to enter your address here. Um, I'm going to, it's okay. Um, so I'm going to use a one here. That's fine. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Trying to do this relatively quickly. It may tell me that this doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, man. And it's frozen. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Let's do another question in the meantime while we wait. Sure. Uh, Rachel is asking, can I start the application while awaiting the standardized test waiver decision? Absolutely. Um, so I'm, I believe they give you a specific date, actually, um, for each round. I think it's about a week after. Um, so where they're still, where you're still able to submit the text applications, I'd encourage you also to, I may, I may say this again, depending on the question, but have the relationship with the admissions committee, uh, reach out to them. Um, if you want to check, Hey, I'm planning on submitting for round one. Um, I'm taking the GMAT on this date. Can I submit the score on X date? Um, and they can make sure and confirm, and then you also have it in writing, which is helpful. But at the end of the day, reaching out to the admissions committee can be really helpful, even just to begin that relationship with the school. Um, so if there are questions that even I don't answer here for you, or you have specific questions about your, your, your own, you know, unique profile, or something in your background that you want to talk to them about, they are there for you to, you know, act, not consult with, but at least get more information and engage with. And it is your first relationship with the school, so to speak. So I hope that answers your question. Um, just going to put my cell phone there. <laughs> um, so you can see here they're optional. So you can put your uh, gender identity here. Um, they have native language. English is somewhere here. And generally speaking, when you're filling out any of these applications, the most important thing is to be honest. Uh, you don't want to say that you speak another language when you don't. Um, though just for just to show you how this works, they tell you if you want to select multiple language, you can hold the control key. Um, if you're on a Mac, I believe it's command like this. This is all sort of basic kind of information. They have your high school. I think I'm going to stop filling it out so I can keep progressing <laughs> and make sure that we get to the other parts of the application. They have military experience here. Um, they have race and ethnicity here. Um, these are also, you can see, optional questions. Um, this additional information question, question set is also optional about whether you're a first generation college student. Um, do you speak another language in your household? Um, the parental and guardian information is optional. If you do have an alumni in your, in your family, I highly encourage you to fill, fill this out. Um, even if it's not NYU Stern, if it's any NYU school, definitely put them in there. Um, 
I think it's it's just kind of nice to see <laughs> that that you have and the NYU blood in the family, mm -hmm. um, but it is optional. There's no obligation to fill these out. Um, they also won't stop you from moving on if you haven't fully uh, filled out these up these parts of the application. They won't let you submit at the end until everything is filled out. Um, but if you're not sure about something and you want to come back to it, you can absolutely um, leave a, a, a space blank and then go back to it. So next we have the program information uh, page. So the first section here is about your specializations. Um, this is somewhat unique to NYU. Some schools do have specializations. Um, NYU has a lot of them and they have a link to them here. So you can browse their specializations, learn more about the differences between them. Um, my advice here is to think first about your career goals. Your essay is going to ask about them and we'll get to the essays in a little bit. Um, but the specializations that you pick should be related to what you're saying are your career goals. You are going to be talking about what you intend to learn and gain from your MBA. So if you're going to put specializations here, I highly encourage you and not really encourage you, but really advise that you pick specializations that align with the, those foundational skills or those career choices that you made. Um, you can choose not to have a specialization. In fact, as a Stern alum, I can tell you, I would say it's about 50-50 in terms of people who actually like do specializations and people who don't. Um, if you want a generalized experience where you take classes without necessarily fulfilling a specialization, that's completely up to you. There are also a lot of people who don't declare a specialization, end up taking the classes that fulfill them, and then, then they just, they claim that they have the specialization and submit that they have it anyway. Um, but there's no disadvantage here, really, um, except you can reinforce what you want to gain from the MBA. Um, but there's also no harm in saying general. So um, you can pick from the options they have. Like I said, they have a lot. Or you can just select no intended specialization, which is I just want a general experience or I don't want to necessarily put myself into a certain category at this time. These are also non-binding, which they say in here. Um, so just because you say something here, it doesn't mean that if you got accepted, you have to do that specialization. You can completely go in a different direction if, if that's what you, you eventually decide to do. They have, you can do up to three specializations. If you're going to say no intended specialization, make sure you select it for all of them. Um, then they have, please select your primary area of career interest. Um, it, it's a slightly more limited list. If you did select specializations, again, this is where it comes in. It should be somewhat aligned to where you're going. Um, you can select other and say, whatever that is, maybe it's, I don't know, um, climate tech is not necessarily here, but it's, it gives them an idea of where you're going. Again, you're going to be talking about it in your essays. I'm going to pause. Are there any questions? <laughs> yeah, this is really great. Uh, I think just some follow-up questions about the standardized tests. So um, Soth is asking, is NYU accepting the focus GMAT for round two and three? I think probably check with NYU, but do you happen to know, Trisha? But thinking of writing the focus. Oh, I see. Yeah, um, so the focus it, test. Yeah, so I I believe that they're um they do accept it for round two and round three, but I I I would check actually. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe you can check. They actually changed their testing requirements this year. I know for the Tech MBA, they actually don't require any standardized tests anymore. Um, it's completely optional. Um, but either way, the best thing that you can do is just check. Um, you can even share your score if you want to. Um, you don't have to. Um, if you're just saying like, I took it on this date, I have a score. Is it eligible for this date? It's just good to get confirmation from them directly. 
Perfect. And Adriana has a question about this as well. What if I don't have my GMAT score by the deadline? Yeah, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier, um, but um, that's fine. Um, you can submit your GMAT score up to a certain period after. I would check with the admissions committee. Um, they basically explain, I tend, intend to submit on this date. Can, like, how long do I have after? Uh, my advice would be to wait, though, to submit until you have the GMAT score. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think I, I also mentioned it earlier in terms of the, the rounds, the deadlines. Um, it is rolling for the most part. So even if you miss the deadline, it just means that you're going to hear back a little bit later. It doesn't necessarily mean you're ruling yourself out um, of a certain, you know, eligibil eligibility period. Um, it's just if you fill it out by X deadline, you will definitely hear back by Y date. Um, so if you need one more week to get your GMAT score, maybe you need a month, just wait to submit. I think it's the safest option and you'll just hear back from the school a little bit later, which you would hear back a little bit later either way <laughs> if you submitted the GMAT score after submitting the application as well. All right, perfect. I think that's good. We can go to the next section. All right, um, so this is just, where did you hear about us should be pretty straightforward. It's really just for them for marketing purposes. Um, statements of interest. So this is where you're specifying, I'd like to be considered for merit scholarships. So if you wanna be considered, make sure you check that box off um, so that they do consider you for them. Um, they, won't, they won't do it otherwise. Then there's, uh, I authorize NYU CERN to share my information with cor corporate partners. Um, these are, by the way, all optional and, again, also non-binding. Um, so if you're not sure about it, that's okay. You don't have to do it. It's not going to hurt your chances of getting into the school. So then I know we kind of jumped the gun a little bit here, but this is the standardized test section. <laughs> um, so this is where you add your test um, and you just write it in here. In terms of the GMAT, you have to do it, I believe, through GMAC. Um, where you have GMAC send the score to the school. Um, after this page, you get a page of your, your application components and whether they've been submitted. So, so NYU will show whether you, they've received your score from GMAC yet. Um, again, if you're concerned or you're not sure or you see that it's not there yet and it should be, reach out to NYU, let them know um, that you've taken it, reach out to GMAC uh, too, if, it, if something's amiss or not there. I actually think that happened to me. <laughs> I think I had to reach out to GMAC um, because I thought it went through and it didn't. Um, it never hurts to just speak to a person, um, but this is all just the self-reported score. Um, I think you should have a, um, so you, you select, for example, the GMAT here. Um, this should come out, uh, these scores should come out from your score report. So if you I don't know, got a 720. It usually has a percentile on the score sheet that you, you get um, when you leave um, when you leave the uh, testing site. Mm -hmm. I, I always forget too, people take it online now too. <laughs> um, but I believe you get a you get a sheet regardless. Uh, that yeah, you should be able to find it in the GMAC login or yeah. something. Um, and you just add it there and then hopefully everything works out with GMAC and it goes there too. Um, then we have academic information. Um, so this is where generally where you went undergrad. It could also be if you did study abroad, you might want to put in here. Um, basically anywhere where you've gotten a transcript beyond high school, um, you can put in here. Um, this may also include other graduate programs that you've completed. Um, oh, it just got very quiet. Are you still there? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so Pretty straightforward. Um, at the end, they have a self-reported transcript. Um, mostly you can get this from your school. You can call them. There's usually a way that you can get it. Um, the self-reported ones usually have a watermark on it. Don't worry about it. Uh, just make sure that you read the instructions here and make sure that it has all of the information. It should have your, G your GPA. It should have all of the classes when you took them 
and the grade that you received from that class. Um, they're very specific about this. Um, not that that should worry you. Most schools' transcripts look like this, so shouldn't be something too concerning about it. Um, just go through your school and then submit it here. Um, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's, and also do not convert your GPA um, to a standard GPA. Um, it should be whatever GPA is on your, trans, on your transcript. So the main thing about the entire application is consistency. So at the end of your application, they will do a background check. And the main part of the background check is making sure that what you reported here is full and accurate. Um, so if you say you went for certain dates, they can call the school and say I, that, you know, Trisha Nussbaum attended from this date to this date, and it's, they check it off. Um, so it should be accurate. Um, so if your transcript says a certain GPA, that's what you're putting in here. Close this. Next is the professional background section. Uh, pretty short because then you get into employment history, which is a lot more detailed. <laughs> um, but these are just pretty basic questions. Are you employed by NYU? Um, that's the university itself. Um, so if you work there or not, um, how many months of full-time work? They're also very explicit about what they're looking for here. Calculate the months of full-time work between your graduation from undergraduate slash graduate school and the anticipated start of your program at Stern. So that's also including beyond when you um, are applying. So if you're planning on attending, for example, in August of 2024, you are also going to be including the months of work that you will have gained between the time of submission and the time you, you will start your semester. Um, so it, it might be more than you think. Um, it takes some time. Um, and again, consistency is key. So if you have those dates on your resume, that could be a really good place to start too in terms of calculating this out. Um, are you including an EQ ind endorsement from your current supervisor? So that what an EQ endorsement is, that's a unique term to NYU. That's your recommendation. Um, NYU only requires one and it should be from your current employer. There can be reasons why you might not get it from your current employer. They understand that. That's why they're asking here. If the answer is no, they will want you to explain. Um, but there are reasonable explanations that you can give. For example, if it puts your job at risk, then you may not want to tell your employer that you're planning on applying to an MBA program. That's acceptable, but there should be a reason. Um, you can also get additional EQ endorsements, recommendations, um, whatever you want to call them. Um, I generally wouldn't say more than two. Um, but you know, some, maybe you've only worked at your employer for a year and you want someone who's worked with you longer to give a recommendation as well. That's completely fine too, but only one is required. And it's generally advised that it's your current supervisor. Will you receive sponsorship from your current employer? And then here is also where you submit your resume. Um, resumes, um, pretty standard across most applications. Um, if you're not sure where to start or you don't have one, um, lots of places to go. I would actually advise if you're starting from zero, attend an event, um, meet an alumni and ask them to share their resume. <laughs> um, ask them if they can share their resume and use theirs as like a sample and, and template in terms of how to format it. And it should be generally one page. I'm gonna pause, are there any questions before I keep going? Yeah, this is really helpful. A uh, quick question about the EQ endorsement. Mm -hmm. Is that still, I, I understand the term is different, but is it still just kind of the standard or common recommendation or is there something specific they need to fill out? It is actually a little bit different. It's mostly the same. Um, so I think like the standard questions that are usually in a recommendation for other programs is, um, a question asking about this person's strengths, a person, a question asking about um, how you take feedback. Um, NYU has an additional question beyond that, which is about the applicant's um, emotional um, intelligence. The question explains what that means. Um, so kind of 
Are you, do you go out of your way to help people? Do you care about people and have you shown it? Um, if you're speaking to your recommender, is it sometimes helpful to tell them that the NYU one is different, especially if they're doing multiple ones, so they know to look out for that extra question. Beyond that, they're pretty much the same. Okay, that's perfect, thank you. Okay, um, so the next section is the employment history, if it loads, it's a little slow. Um, and this is where you're putting all the jobs that you've had um, you simply add a position. Um, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Um, they, they're, they're smart. I think, I can't remember if they self-organize based on the dates that you put in, but they will be self-organized for, for, um, the admissions committee anyway. Um, so you don't have to worry about like, I, I did this, I entered this one first, just do enter it. However, it's easiest for you. Um, you can put multiple positions for the same job. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, one catch-all. Um, and I haven't had any clients who have been limited by this. Um, I think the limit is pretty high um, if there is one. Um, but if for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe you've worked at 20 plus places um, or you've had 20 plus positions, I guess it could happen. You could use lumping common jobs in one employer's um in one employer's position so if you've changed jobs within the same company you can enter it as one if you're running out of space but generally speaking i'd say do them separately um, you have um here you have position or title you can also again ask the admissions committee what they prefer. Um, so this is another one, depending on your unique situation, if you're filling it out, and I really don't think there's a limit, so I'm really speaking hypothetically, but if you're not sure, you can always just ask and reach out and say, hey, I, I've worked 20, 20 jobs at the same company. How would you prefer that I enter it? Um, should I enter them individually? And they'll tell you. Um, I think they'll probably tell you to do it individually. <laughs> um, and and they'll give you whatever advice that they prefer but always another way that you could potentially reach out and engage with them um, so it's the organization name it's the address the dates of employment you can select present if you're still there um, starting compensation ending compensation industry job function description reason for leaving i'll go over all of this <laughs> um, so i worked at ibm myself at one point um, in terms of the actual address um, you can go a few different ways here. You can do the main corporate address, or you can do the address that you physically worked at as long as it's consistent. So for example, if you use the corporate address in one of them, you should use it for all of the jobs that you enter. Um, that's fine. The main important thing that you're doing is the phone number should be the corporate phone number. If your company doesn't exist anymore, just use the one that you have most recently. Um, to your knowledge what the phone number is. Um, in terms of the um, compensation, it should be the accurate compensation. So your starting compensation is the day you started, your ending compensation is the day you left. Um, if you're not sure, pull up a pay stub or call the company to get your pay stub, but it, it should be accurate. It's okay, it's not gonna hurt you if your salary went down um, or it didn't go up and it's the same, that's okay. They, it's, it's mostly, to understand your career decisions and and that's about it um it's it's not going to hurt you um and if you're not sure for your annual bonus just guess but it should be in your pay stub um industry uh, this is the company's industry, not necessarily where you worked in that organization. So if I worked at IBM, it would be technology. Um, they have a few options here. So to the best of my knowledge, I'll select software. A few things that you can do here, see how the company describes themselves on their website or go to their Wikipedia page and see if it's defined there. But it's it's the company, not necessarily the the um, the area that you were in. Um, the area that you were in should be the job function section. So if you're a consultant, 
the description here should be different from your resume. Um, so you shouldn't be copy and pasting the resume bullets here. It should be more about your roles and responsibilities, whereas your resume is about your accomplishments. Um, this doesn't have to be in bullets. It could be a few sentences. I usually advise my clients to write them out separately and then we work on them, but we usually do a few sentences. Um, and if you're really not sure where to start here, a good place to start would be look up your job on like their job site see how they describe themselves, that could be a good way to understand even just how to articulate um, a description for a job. Reason for leaving, um, there's 50 words here, so you have a little bit of runway here if you need to explain a little bit more, um, but I'd encourage you to be honest and make it make sense. <laughs> um, so if the reason for leaving is, you know, you weren't seeing career growth, that is a reason. Or if there was something else that you wanted to pursue that was more interesting to you, that is a reason. If you were laid off, that is a legitimate reason. If you want to give a little bit more explanation, you do have some room here to give a little bit of context. And I highly encourage people to give context. Anything that you think you might be nervous about, there's always the optional essay if you don't feel that you can explain it here. Um, so if you want to give additional context about everything, anything that might make you nervous, there's always the optional essay where you can explain further too. But that's, that's pretty much it for these. Oh, and then of course, are you currently employed by this organization? Um, your, ending your ending compensation, if it's your current employer, would be your current salary. I'll pause here before I keep going. Oh, perfect. Yeah, quick question. I've seen that on other applications, they usually limit employment history to like, you know, three or four. I know you mentioned that you can add as many for the NYU application. So um, given that context, like, would you recommend if you do like a promotion or something, should you lump that under one entry if we have unlimited entries? If it's the same job function and you just went up a level, um, then I would put it maybe in one entry if you're concerned about it being um, too many. I'm pretty sure this doesn't have a limit. I have never had a client go <laughs> over a limit for this application. <laughs> um, I do know some other schools do. Um, and again, I would just say check with the adcom, um, reach out to them, say, this is the situation, I hit a limit. Um, how would you advise I, I do this? Or you could work with a coach like me and we could, we could also help advise you depending on the specific jobs that you have, what might be good to put together. Okay, perfect. And just to review Ankit's question here, so any advice for the part where they ask you to mention why did you leave? And I know you went over this, we got 50 words and try to add some context, but it sounds like if you're still concerned add to the optional essay. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So <laughs> that's the optional essay. If there's any gap or if you're you're concerned about why did you leave? Um, you know, if you didn't leave your company on on, you know, good terms, for example, it might be something that you want to explain. And I really want to stress that there is no fear about using the optional essay for anything. Um, it's I, I think it should be, I think a common misconception about the, the optional essay is that it will raise flags that might not exist. But the admissions committee is smart. They're going to read your application in full. And if there is a red flag or an orange flag, or maybe there's not a flag, but anything, they're going to notice it. And all, it just gives you the opportunity to put them in your shoes of what you were thinking um, and give them that context as opposed to leaving it up to them to kind of speculate and figure out on their own. Um, so if you don't feel that those 50 words are going to give it to you, use the optional essay. All right, perfect. All right. So next we have the activities and achievement section. Um, so this is extracurriculars. Um, I find that with my clients, people tend to underestimate how many extracurriculars they're in. They're like extracurricular is a broad word. <laughs> so really anything that you're doing beyond your job. I mean, it shouldn't be like I get together with my friends, but maybe <laughs> you, <laughs> you attend an event for a certain organization and you subscribe to that organization. You can be a participant. So just keep that in mind. Um, the main thing here that I would say is there is a specific format 
that they want these done. They, they're pretty clear here. So list college extracurricular, professional, or community activities in the order of their importance to you. Include dates of involvements and any offices you've held. And then it literally says, e.g., activity dash dates of involvement dash office held. So generally, I format it exactly the way that they tell me to, and I number them so that they see that order of importance that they're asking me to do. So if I, I was in a college acapella group, so I'll say um, nothing but treble was my acapella group. Uh, <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> um, I was in there from August 2009 to, sorry, to May 2013. And I was a singer slash member. Um, and then I can give a description if I want. Um, sang in an all female acapella group. Uh, X number of performances per year, etc. There actually isn't a word limit on these. Um, but Try not to go overboard either. Be reasonable. Um, like when I say there's a lot of extracurriculars that you could include here, I'm not saying that because you should include everything. It's because when I work with clients, they tend to underestimate the things that they participate in. Um, if you've written articles for for a publication and online, maybe you have a blog. Um, you know there are or or an online store or something that you help a friend do. There are a lot of things that you could potentially include here. Um, so it's it should be the most important things first. Just keep that in mind. Um, you can also repeat things that you've had on your resume. I had this on my resume, for example. So if you have, for example, an activity section, some people do that on the bottom of their resume, you can have them in both places. That's fine. Um, Achievements. So achievements here, kind of same thing. They're also um, giving you examples here. So they say uh, Phi Beta Kappa, Summa Cum Laude, military, extracurricular, professional, or community. So if you received any awards, um, if you if you were in a group and they won something, or you were a team and or you won, did you get academic honors in any in any way? You can include all of that here. Um, it doesn't have to be based on your graduate experience, it could be post-grad, if you receive some sort of honor or achievement, all of that can go here. Um, and similar, I would try to format it in a very clear way. They're not giving you a specific format for this one, um, but just make it clear. So put exactly what was the award, maybe then the date of the award, and then a, a dash and explain it. Um, I would keep it pretty short as well, no more than a sentence. And finally, we have professional certifications. They give you examples here too, CFA, CPA, PMP, Series 7. These should be certifications. If you had an official certification, it shouldn't really be beyond that. Um, I would, again, put the date that you achieve them as well here. All right, perfect. Uh, Ira has a question um, for achievements can you mention awards your organization gave you while you work there, but are internal to the organization? Of course, um, I, I definitely put some myself. Um, so you can definitely put those. Um, if there's some sort of privacy concern that you're concerned about, maybe you generalize the name of the award. Um, I'm not sure if that's what you're getting at. So like you, if it was some sort of specific name that's not externally shareable, you could say like just, award for, I don't know, social community, whatever, like generalize whatever the purpose of that award was or why you mm -hmm. achieved it. Um, or you can instead talk about the work that got you that award. Um, so work for completing a project about X. Um, so you can definitely do that. Either way, you probably want to have some sort of description. Um, but that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, you can you can absolutely do work awards as many as you want. <laughs> there, there is no limit. It's just a box. There is no word count either. Just don't write too many sentences. I would just write one. Sure. 
Uh, and Rachel has a question on professional certifications. Mm -hmm. Should we mention the ones that we're currently taking and maybe not yet completed? For example, uh, the CFA has several different levels. So maybe I've passed some levels, but not completed the whole thing. Should I be including that? You can. Um definitely include the ones you've already done. And then you can say, for example, CFA level, whatever, and then put a dash intended to take test on this date. Um, that's completely fine. And then they, at least they understand you don't have the certification, but you will ha hopefully have it. And they know what, what a test is. So they, they understand that you don't actually have it yet, but I think it's fair to write it that way. Okay, perfect. And another theme I've heard on this page is just, you know, don't go overboard or list too many things. Would you have some sort of rule of thumb or, you know, how do you know if you are going overboard with these things? Yeah, I mean, it's good to use your judgment. <laughs> um, I would say like around three to five is good. Um, you know, if you have, if they're really important things, if you're, if you're writing 10, it's probably a lot. Um, so I think when you get above five, that's when you should start questioning, is this important enough to be here? Um, but I think three to five is a good target of, of where you should be aiming. All right. That's perfect. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Let's go to the next section. All right. So this is the big section. This is the essay section. <laughs> um, and, uh, and being conscious of time here, we don't have all the time to talk about this, but I'll give you guys a little bit of an intro for these. Um, so NYU has three essays. Um, they have your professional aspirations essays, which is 150 words. Um, what are your short-term career goals? Then there's essay number one, which is change blanket, uh, which I will talk about a little bit in more detail. And then there's their, the pick six, which is essay number two. So for professional aspirations, it's only 150 words. It should be really clear and concise. It's, this is what my goal is, <laughs> very clearly. They're very directly asking you, what are your short-term career goals? You have a little bit of room here to talk about your background. So it should connect um, or make sense, and you have some room to do that here, um, but make sure that you answer the question very clearly. Um, in terms of word counts in general, you're uploading a file here. Usually it's a PDF. Um, they say, I actually think they say, you may upload Word and PDF documents. Um, so they're not really counting your words, so to speak, but try to stay under the limit. Um, you can probably get away with a couple of words, but try not to do it. <laughs> Um, so then essay one, change blanket. Um, I think this is the one that is the newest. I think they added this about two years ago. Make sure you do research on this. Fortuna, which is the company that I work for, uh, has a lot of resources. We've done talks about this. Uh, please check them out on our website. Um, we also can work and consult with you on how to do this. Um, but my biggest overall advice for this essay is make sure you read and understand the question and answer all of the components in the question. Um, research the school. There's a link here. Um, this, this change, dare it, read it, drive it. You can see it's purple because I've probably already clicked it. But that is a link and it takes you to their page where they talk about their NYU call to action, which is about change. And they talk about their perspective on what change means. And it's a really good precursor to get your juices flowing about this essay. Um, they give you some example words that you can use. This is all about how you're going to make an impact both after NYU and at NYU, and they do ask that specifically, um, how will you embrace your own personal tagline about change while at Stern? So they're looking for you to come in and not just learn, but also take an active role in their community. So do your research um, and get a feel for this question before getting started. Um, and then the last essay question here is the pick six, which is the most fun of all of them. Um, Again, make sure you read the instructions. They're very explicit in terms of how they want you to format this. There is a three sentence uh, intro to set the stage. Then you pick six pictures um, and they should be things that are important to you. They can be fun. Um, 
and then you get one sentence for a caption. Make sure it's grammatically correct. Don't write a paragraph and expect them to believe that you wrote a sentence uh, because you didn't put a period. Make sure that it's an it's a fair sentence um, for 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 anyone to read. Um, a lot of people like to do pre like. PowerPoint presentations for this or slides. Um, you don't have to. It can be. Um, it can be pages. You can make it creative. Um, I think the biggest advice that I have for this is don't overthink it. Um, there, it doesn't have to be. If you're, you know, going into tech, um, like you don't have to make every picture about. Steve Jobs or something. <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's really just for them to get to know you. Um, think of it more as almost like the top six pictures on your Instagram profile. <laughs> like, what would you want them to to like know about you as a like your personality and what you like to do? Um, so some examples might be maybe you um, went to Bermuda and swam with the dolphins and it was a really memorable experience for you. Or maybe you um, got to see your whole family at a cousin's wedding. Um, it's it's really just what are the most memorable moments for you? Who makes who, you, who makes, what makes you, you? <laughs> and that's what they're getting at here. So don't overthink it. It's really, it's, it's more fun than you think. Um, and then there's the optional essay, which I've already talked about. They give you some examples here of what you can talk about. There is a word limit. Um, so keeping that in mind, um, you don't wanna talk about everything um, unless you, I mean, you might you might have a lot of things you wanna talk about, but just be conscious of the word count and make sure that you're dedicating the right amount of words to each topic and make it concise as you can. Um, lots of things you can talk about, employment gaps, why you didn't get a um, recommendation from your employer if you want to add additional context there. Um, really anything that can that might keep you up at night um, that you want to just provide that additional context for. That's the essays in four minutes. <laughs> it's the fastest I ever did it, uh, but I'm happy to take questions before I move on. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I'll wait for the chat if they have any specific questions. Um... Other than that, I guess, what are some of the very, I don't know, memorable or unique essays that you've seen on these topics? Yeah, I mean, I think the pick six is always the most fun when I'm working with clients to see what they send me and what they care about most. Um, one thing that is, I think, uh, another thing, good tip to keep in mind is don't try to cheat by having like two pictures in one. <laughs> um, some people do try to do that. Um, so try to make sure that it's it's one picture. Um, but, you know, I, I love seeing what people are in, into. I had a client who um, did like a coffee Friday with her friends. And even when they went their separate ways, they did it virtually and they sent each other their pictures of their coffee, <laughs> which I think was really cute and something that they could do during the pandemic. And that should be a good example of like, it doesn't have to be academic. It doesn't have to be career focused. They just wanna get a picture that you're gonna like get along with people, I think. Um, <laughs> The dean actually talks about it a, a little bit when you first start at Stern, um, that when he thinks of people at NYU Stern, uh, he thinks about sitting in an airport with them and can he walk away from that conversation and, you know, have gone beyond their basic information of where they're from and actually be excited and want to talk to them again. Um, so, and he'll, he'll actually like reference things that he saw that year. He was like, someone went snorkeling between the tectonic plates and, you know, like there are some really cool things that you can put in here. Um, any questions come in? About the yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, I think you went over this a little bit, but Rachel is asking, um, you know, is there anything on the essays specific points to highlight or focus on in order to, you know, have a strong score on this section? Uh, it sounds like personality, make sure that comes through. I don't know what other advice you have. Yeah, I mean, each one sort of has their own purpose. So the first one, the professional aspirations essay is very clear of what they're asking you for in terms of what you focus on. It's your career goals. So I want to do this. Um, this is what I need to do it. Um, so that one's 
the most basic. The pick six, I've just kind of talked about ad nauseum, so I may not talk about it more, but that's just your personality. I think your question is probably the most relevant to that second one, which I think is probably the most daunting question. Um, so it, if you break down this question a little bit, it lends itself to specific things that you should focus on. Um, so reading this together a little bit. In today's global business environment, the only constant is change. Using NYU Stern's brand call to action, we want to know how you view change. That's the first thing that you want to focus on is they want to know how you view change. So topic number one, tell them how you view change. <laughs> That's the first thing that you need to answer. Mm -hmm. Then change blanket, fill in the blank with your word of choice. That's section number two. Um, they want to know why does this word resonate with you? So that's the personal tagline. It could be fun. Make sure it makes sense for your background and whatever you're talking about. A good example, I had a client last year who um, wanted to focus on um, quite literally empowering women uh, in the workplace. So her word of choice was empower it. It just really lended itself to that word. It wasn't actually, it is one of the example words. So <laughs> it is one of the ones there, but it, it made perfect sense based on her story and her passions. And then the third section, how will you embrace it? So this is where you want to kind of do your research on the school. How can you get involved? Speak to alumni. You can name drop the alumni. That's fine. Um, talk about what you learned from them, what interests you and what you're excited to get involved with, keeping all of the things that you've explained in mind. So make sure you focus on what the question's asking you. And if you really read the questions, they tell you quite uh, quite explicitly what you want. they want you to focus on. All right, perfect. A uh, question from Ira on the third optional essay. So would you recommend just doing separate bullet points for different things that you want to address? Or do you have formatting advice for, about, for uh, additional context? Uh, yeah. So if you're if you're doing multiple, I think generally the format for this is paragraph form. So if you're going to talk about different topics, you can put a headline like, I don't know, um, maybe you, you were on academic probation. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's just an example. Uh, academic academic experience in bold colon. And then I write my paragraph or two. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I would just specify that you're going into a different topic that way so that it's clear, but I would still write it in essay format. Okay, perfect. I think that's what we have on the essays. Let's get through the next couple sections. We have All right. a little over five minutes left in the session. Sounds good. So then we have the EQ endorsement. We did already talk about this a little bit, but this is where you do it. Um, I do want to mention, usually this is the first thing I do. So and, and when I'm working with clients, this is the first thing that we focus on because it is the part of the application that you have the least control over. <laughs> um, so when you open up the application and once you've spoken or chosen your, your endorser, go straight here. Give them as much time as possible. Um, skip all the other sections. I'm glad that NYU lets you do that. Go straight here and send them the invitation. Um, you should be selecting, I waive my right to access this report. Um, it's, it's kind of just a best practice. There's, it's not going to hurt you if you don't select it, but just do it. <laughs> um, it's, it's more of like a, why didn't they select it? Mm -hmm. Um, but just select it. It's, it's, you don't have to read it. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to cancel this cause I didn't fill anything out here. Um, then there's the background section. So this is disciplinary actions, um, academic, um, things, criminal, um, be honest here, make sure you read it. Um, if you're working with a coach, you can talk to them about it. Again, this can also be potentially a section that you address in an optional essay or you reach out to the school about depending on your circumstances. Um, but you have to be honest because remember there is a background check. Um, so they, they, will know, they will find out whether or not <laughs> um, you, you specify it here regardless. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then that's it. There's the signature. And then you can review the application components. Um, you can see everything is required <laughs> here that I haven't done. <laughs> um, but that's okay, uh, because this is just taking us through the application. And um, yeah, that's it. All right, that's perfect. 
A um, couple other questions, and guys, if you're in the live right now, make sure that you get your questions in before we have to end the session. Uh, it sounds like a lot of people like Rithika and Divya are both kind of asking about um, significant online uh, courses that they took. Mm -hmm. So courses from Coursera or edX. I know that we had a section where you could submit your transcripts there, but um, you know, what would be your advice or recommendation? Yeah, I mean, if it doesn't come up in um, a transcript form, I would put it in the achievement section for sure. Like not even a question, that's where you would put it. Um, depending specifically on what it is, it could either go in uh, achievements or certifications, but that's where I would put it. Okay, perfect. Um, just making sure we didn't miss any other questions. Oh, okay. Ira has an interesting one. Um, could you talk more about what like creative opportunities there are at NYU? Uh, Ira says they are quite worried that the MBA is very finance focused. <laughs> yes, I know that 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 is um, generally the the strength of the the of the school. I myself am tech focused, <laughs> um, and I actually believe that NYU has become more and more tech focused. They recently added a tech MBA, um, but there are a lot of creative opportunities. Explore um, in this section. It was, I believe, program information where we talked about the specializations. Um, so you can learn a lot about the different options here, but you can actually, if we just click the drop down here, you can see there's quite a lot beyond finance. Accounting is finance, <laughs> brand management, uh, business analytics, digital marketing, entertainment and media, entrepreneurship. Um, so there is quite a lot beyond um, finance. It is a finance, like, a strong institution, but it definitely has other things. I myself, I specialized in entertainment, media, and tech, uh, took some really fun classes. NYU um, is a pretty connected school as well. I'm not here to sell the school, <laughs> um, but definitely do your research a little bit. Um, it, it, the undergraduate um, school is very arts focused. Um, so there are actually quite a lot of opportunities. I think you can take up to two classes even beyond NYU Stern. So you can actually take a few classes in the Tisch School if you'd like to. Amazing, yeah, I think that would be super fun. Tisch is so famous and you know well known for the arts. Yeah. Uh, Amrit is curious um, if, Currently, you're on a career break preparing for the tests and applications. Um, what would be your approach throughout the application process? Um, in terms of, I'm assuming this is in terms of like explaining a career gap. Um, yeah, is there anything I guess you would do differently about the application if you're currently on a career break? I mean, I would, I, I believe, use the optional essay. I mean, they, they will know. I think it depends also like how long you're on a career break. I think if it's like a few months, it's okay. If you're, I think I would say maybe beyond six months, um, you might want to explain it. Um, so the optional essay again is your friend. Just just say, you know, and, and I think that like you can write things reasonably. Um, it's your opportunity again to just help them get in your head of what you're thinking. You know, if you're prioritizing the MBA um, and you believe that your job may impede you, then maybe that's how you explain it. Um, so they can just understand where you're coming from. So optional essay is your friend there. Perfect. And last question from Kunit today. Is it necessary to have a photo of yourself in the pick six photos? I didn't see any real restrictions. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. I usually tell people to have at least one picture of themselves up front, but they do not all have to be in all six photos. Um, I would try to have like pictures that you took. Like there may be exceptions. Like if you really don't have any pictures of yourself doing the thing that you're talking about, um like you could like maybe you're into video games i don't know you put the picture of the video game <laughs> um alternatively you can take photos like have a friend or a family member take a photo for you if you don't have one so if you're into video games sit in front of the television and have them take a picture of you uh so there and i've had clients do that where we've taken pictures for the pick six just to represent it so we're not just having like a stock photo um yeah. 
And it just makes it a little bit more meaningful, but there's no requirement to do it. The, the important thing is that it is meaningful. Um, if you've created something like a work of art, definitely include the art. You don't have to be in the picture with the art. That's awesome. Okay. We're on the hour, so I think out of time, but this has been a really great session. Thank you so much, Trisha. Um, from our end on at GMAT Club, uh, we're meeting next week with Kellogg, Haas, LBS, and Tuck doing these same like walkthrough sessions. So make sure you register for the link. And then I know Trisha is also here representing Fortuna Admissions. So I'm posting the link to their website also in the comments. Uh, other than that, Trisha, anything you want to say? No, thank you so much for having me. Um, thank you for all the great questions and I hope it was helpful. All right. Thank you so much. Bye guys.